Here's another video with Chris Bevine, the professional patchman who will spill a few more of his trade secrets just for you. Crispy showed us how to do a little patch in the last video. Now he has to work on something a little bigger. Look at this nasty crack in the wall. So here's a different kind of patch. This one was pre-existing here. Uh, looks like there's a crack here. You might not be able to see it through the camera. There's a pretty big uh, indent. So we're probably gonna have to bust this out all the way. I did a little knocking on the wall. See where my stud's at. Looks like the stud's gonna be on this side of the outlet box. So I'll try to make this one as smooth as I can up along the stud line uh, so that way I can seal this pre-existing drywall and then add in for the new patch area. First we want to prep the wall by removing the outlet cover. We'll run some painter's tape over the outlet to avoid getting any mud on it. Using a two foot level we'll make some straight lines. You'll score the paper with a utility knife to get a clean cut. Then, to cut through drywall, I'm using a jab saw. It's a handy tool you can use to poke through the wall and cut. I'm trying to be careful here for the electrical line. how you retrofit the cut. Here I have a uh, cordless screw gun. It allows you to set a depth. That way you don't go too far into the drywall. You more than likely won't have this at home, uh, but definitely worth the cost if you're out in the field. Uh, this is pretty much what you would have at home. A compact drill or one that attaches here. But this is what I'll show you how to do it with, just so you have an idea. But I'm gonna just tighten this up real quick. So when you do, patches like this and need to actually use backing in the pre-existing drywall you're going to want to tighten up all your edges same thing if you came across through here you want to do all of the pre-existing holes if it was a flood cut you would go into the pre-existing drywall and the new drywall for this backing i'm just using a three quarter or two quarter inch baseboard just leftovers from the job site we're going to want to take this backing here to the more flush side and we will Apply our first screw. Just want to hold it a little tight, make that connection. And you still want to make sure that you get this edge gone. That way you don't create any humps. Chris is using what are called drywall screws, and they come in various lengths. These are one and a half inches long. Drywall screws tap easily through the gypsum and drill themselves into the wood. Great screws. It's the duct tape of screws with many uses. I will leave about an eighth of an inch gap to ensure my piece fits in snugly. So here I uh, get my tape measure and start making it smooth if you like. I'm just going to end up leaving about an eighth of an inch gap. That way you can keep it pretty tight. But as long as you, you know, fill up the majority, you can always pre-fill holes before you start adding the tape. But now I know I'm probably going to need about an eighth and three quarter. I'm going to go by the high side. It looks like about 17 and an eighth. So here's my 17 and an eighth. I push my finger here, ensuring that I'm just right there at the eighth mark. And I'm just gonna simply drag my blade. Now that I have my line here, I'm just gonna push back on this end and it will snap perfectly down the line. I just take my blade here down the backside bend and come straight through. Now we can tighten this up if we would like. way it ensures that it lays in there nice and smooth and our factory edge on this side slides in nice and easy. The factory edge is the one with the paper wrapped around the border. It's also slightly indented or depressed to allow room for tape and a thin coat of mud. All right so we're going to take our eight and three quarter cut here. You'll hear this snapping sound after the cut. This is gonna fit right here in our hole. Perfect. Clip 
clean things up a bit. The patch is tight, but I will pre-fill the edges to make it perfect. I'm using a two inch putty knife to mix my hot mud to the consistency of peanut butter. Smooth, not chunky. I'm applying a filler coat to drive mud into the joint. So in seeing how large this was gonna need to be pre-filled, I have decided to go with a larger knife. This way I can pull everything all the way through from both sides and it'll leave me with a nice flat area. Then when I come to tape this here, it's gonna be a lot more smooth. So I'm just gonna let that have a little bit of time to dry. Luckily we're using the five minute mud. And we'll come back. I'm taping all the joints with ultra thin mesh tape. Sometimes the tape does not want to stick. So you must apply a little bit of mud as you go along. This time it's sticking on there just fine. First coat to this patch, we've already taped it and pre-filled underneath. Now I have my 12 inch knife again. I'm just gonna apply as close as I can to this white, covering the edging from when I pre-filled. So you just, what they call busting it out. So I'm just gonna bust it out here. And I'll start from this awkward angle where the actual outlet is. second coat here. I'm gonna try to still lay it as flat as possible. This is usually how you're filling in the most. I might even get it at like maybe pretty close to a 45. When you coat really thin like this, it avoids having to sand back anything. Everything should be nice and smooth. This is why I typically bust out with a thicker knife just so that that way I don't leave any edges uh, or humps in the middle. Here this mud for the quick set, it's going to avoid some shrinking back. Uh, it'll kind of hold its form a lot more than just like regular mud out of the box. That typically tends to sink in. So anyhow, uh, before this sets up. All right, so I changed it out to my 12 inch knife. Just kind of how I was speaking upon so it doesn't create any humps. This way I can pull it really tight uh, from this angle here get that then it avoids making these edges a little easier. All right here we are using plus three from USG sheetrock brand same people that make this uh, handy dandy trowel here. This stuff is probably the smoothest uh, product that USG has. It comes from Home Depot. It's definitely lighter sand than any of their other products as well. I have already pre-mixed it here and we're going to do our third and final coat on this patch. All right, I've now shown you how to do a small patch and on to a much larger patch here. In the next video, I'll show you how to do some texturing. Well, I hope you found this information useful. You can find my books on home building and remodeling at Amazon. But for now, tell them what to do, Chris. If you like this video, show it. Smash that like button and subscribe for more videos like this one.